Okay, this video is, what is Dr. McDougall's rank order of food problems? And where this comes from is Dr. McDougall's lecture. It's at his uh, YouTube channel, you know, Dr. McDougall Health and Medical Center. And the name of his video was Clean Clearing Up the Confusion About Sugar. Okay, because sugar gets demonized, especially by the paleo, keto, carnivore crowd and Dr. Lustig, the famous Dr. Lustig, who gave the famous lecture, The Bittersweet Truth About Sugar. And a lot of people believe, myself included, that they have to demonize something. So they like to demonize sugar. And don't get me wrong, sugar is not just one thing. There's table sugar, white sugar, you know, there's uh, with glucose and fructose, supposedly about 50-50. But then there's high fructose corn syrup, where you can have 65% of that being due to um, the fructose. Okay, and that is pretty bad stuff. But I'm still making the point that sugar is not in the middle of the game. It's a peripheral thing. All right, so I just want you to hear what Dr. McDougall had to say. You can just click. I'll put the link to his lecture right below this. It's a really short lecture. It has only about six minutes. Um, I just want to summarize some of his points here. So he says the biggest toxin in the Western diet is fat. All right, and I find that funny because all the paroles are constantly being told by the high fat phonies, you need more fat, you need more good fats, you need more good fats. I constantly, like not a day goes by, I don't get a comment or an email saying, how could I be so sure we don't need to eat more fats? That's nonsense, okay? So Dr. McDougall makes the points. People take Dr. McDougall a lot more seriously than they take me, okay? I can justify what I say quite well, but you know, you just say Dr. McDougall said it, you know, it's kind of like saying Einstein said it, okay? So fat makes you fat. The fat you eat, the fat you wear. So the more fat you eat, the more obese likely you are to be obese. Fat sticks red blood cells together, so it causes hypertension. It's the main cause of hypertension. Fat is the main cause of insulin resistance, so it's the main cause of diabetes. Fat causes endothelial damage, and Royce Wank was a big proponent of all the literature on that. Plus, it causes diabetes, which leads to endothelial damage, and it causes hypertension, which leads to endothelial damage. And atherosclerosis is a blood clot. Endothelial damage leads to blood clots, which is atherosclerosis, okay? Atherosclerosis you know, due to hypertension, diabetes, endothelial damage, and a blood clot leads to tissue hypoxia. Tissue hypoxia leads to cancer. Plus, you're also going to get an increased activation of mTOR. All right, so he says fat is the biggest problem in, in the nutritional diets and the Western diets. And if you go to Nathan Pritikin, who was the number one mentor of Dr. McDougall, Nathan Pritikin said fat is bad. The way to categorize diets is based on the amount of fat. That's the most important thing, okay, because fat has tons and tons of calories. So if you stop eating, eating fat, you need to replace it from somewhere, which typically is going to be carbohydrate, okay? And if you stop eating carbohydrate, you need to replace it from somewhere, which is going to be fat. All right, and the best diet in the world is low-fat, low-sodium, vegan diet with no oils. All right, so anyways, also then there's a lot of hype about omega-3s, okay? And it's just a coincidence that the people hyping it are selling it, okay? That's just a coincidence, all right? And then, you know, whenever you see something promoted by these mainstream, you know, uh, channels, if you know what I'm talking about, you should become very suspicious, okay? Have you ever in your life heard of a mainstream TV channel, newspaper, or anything of that sort, or even mainstream, major, well-known, established, um, so I ever giving you correct information about uh, nutrition ever. I mean, if something to somebody tells me, oh, this was in some magazine, like the typical popular so-called magazines, to me, that means it's automatically untrue. You'll never see one of them say low fat, low sodium, starch based, 100% vegan, organic only diet with no oils is the best diet, whole foods. You'll never see that. I've never seen that in my life. Okay, so anyways, omega-3s, you know, they're associated with immune suppression, obesity, insulin resistance, Immune suppression is associated with increased risk of infection, increased risk of cancer, prostate cancer, probably other cancers like breast cancer, probably, et cetera, et cetera, probably lipid peroxidation, et cetera. Okay, so anyways, I, I just think it's funny because there's all these so-called experts promoting people need more good fats. And I think that's all a bunch of nonsense. They're promoting olive oil, which has got a bunch of omega-6 in it. It causes flow-mediated, uh, uh, decreased blood flow in your arteries. What's his name? Dr. Neil Bernard made a nice video about the problems with olive oil recently. Uh, Dr. Klaper made a good video about the problems with olive oil in the past. I've made videos about the problems with olive oil if you want to hear that. But I'm just making this point to you. I don't think there's any such thing as good fats. Neither does Dr. McDougall. He thinks this good fat stuff is nonsense. It's just like what you do is you make a slogan and the average pro doesn't study, doesn't think much. And so they just hear, good fats. I got to get my good fats. Okay, that's nonsense. 
Don't worry about it. It's impossible to be too low in fat. Any naturally chosen diet you're gonna, of plants, you're going to get plenty of omega-3s. Forget about it. Okay, the next topic is protein. So he says the second worst problem in typical Westerner diets is too much protein. First of all, he makes the point there's no such thing as a protein deficiency. Any naturally chosen diet of plant foods, it's impossible to be too low in protein. Okay, And he often talks about human breast milk being about 5 to 6% of calories from protein. He usually says 5%. Some articles say 6%. Okay, so that's at our most rapid phase of growth in our life. So we would never need more protein than that at other phases in our life. And there's all kinds of studies about you know recovering quashiorcor patients from starvation, feeding them really low amounts of protein, like 2.5%, etc. The Papua New Guinea population of these muscle bond guys were eating you know, 93% of the calories from sweet potato, and they had no problem with muscle strength. Okay, that is only 4.5% of its calories from protein the sweet potatoes do. Okay, what else does he say about protein? He says the excess protein overworks the kidneys and the livers and the bones. Okay, it damages the kidneys, the liver, and the bones. Protein means it's made out of amino acid. Acid is the word, the key word there. And it leads to overload of acid put upon the body. And then the body has to buffer that. It's pH. pH is a percentage of hydrogen protons in the blood and in the aqueous, uh, like cytoplasm and other parts of your cell, the organelles. So you, you can't have your pH go too far away from 7.4. And because of that, you have to buffer it if it, things become too acidic. So what happens? Uh, one of the main sites of calcium donation is the bone. Some comes from the muscle too, but one of the main sites is from the bones. And that calcium travels to the kidney because it's co-excreted with the hydrogen protons from the kidneys. And as you co-excrete, you're peeing your bones into the toilet, so to speak, making yourself uh, predisposed to osteoporosis. And simultaneously, you're increasing calcium in your urine. It's called calciuria. You're predisposing yourself to kidney stones. Stupid. Okay, then the other big scam going on these days is, oh, these old people, they're fragile, they're fragile, fragile. Old people die faster, and therefore we need to build muscle on them, and the way to build muscle on them is feed them more protein. B.S. The way to put more muscle on them is get them to exercise, okay? Um, and uh, so McDougall talks about how bogus that is. It's not necessarily in this lecture. He's got several lectures on protein where he talks about that. Okay, um, that's just the latest you know, con job for old people. What are they going to eat? They're going to take protein supplements. Look at consumer reports. There are several papers on how routinely they're contaminated with heavy metals and they damage their kidneys. Tons of old people are in kidney failure. I can tell you, you know, work, go visit a radiology CAT scan department, okay? And you'll see tons of old people with elevated uh, creatinins, BUNs, EGFRs, you know, glomerular filtration rates because their kidneys are not working. And you don't even get abnormal kidney function until you've lost on the labs, until you've lost over half of it, meaning that they're much farther along than is widely acknowledged. Okay, so, but I want you to know that that whole sarcopenia, old people need more protein is BS. Okay, you get stronger from, you know, lifting weights, doing exercise, keeping moving, not from uh, eating more protein. Okay, lack of fiber. Uh, and then he says, so problem number three, oh, I forgot to put it up here in my big red stuff. Lack of fiber is a third problem. And he says that especially comes from eating refined foods because they take out almost all the fiber. Animal foods also, they don't have any fiber. Um, and these refined foods also have a lot of oils and other toxic chemicals. But the key point he made was lack of dietary fiber. But then you run into the whole abdominal pressure syndrome stuff of Dr. Uh, Dennis Burkett described that. And I've got entire lectures on that before. And the other thing you run into is then you don't have the the fiber to feed the good gut bacteria who then make butyrate, short chain fatty acid, which goes to the endothelial lining and is used to make tight junctions and prevent leaky gut, thus preventing autoimmune disease. Okay, thus pretending, preventing all these bowel syndromes too, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, also thus presenting postprandial endotoxemia, whereby if you don't have tight junctions, then the bacterial endotoxins, LPS from gram-negative bacteria, LTA from gram-positive, they get across that endothelial lining, and you get postprandial endotoxemia in the blood, which predisposes to thrombosis, and so you start forming little clots everywhere, dense matted deposits types, you know, it's an amyloidogenic transformation of the clotting, meaning that it changes from an alpha helix to a beta pleated sheet, stacks up, precipitates out of solution. Those clots are more difficult to lice. I gave entire lectures on this, the Douglas Kell stuff, the amyloidogenic blood clotting lectures. And what I'm saying is being prothrombotic predisposes you to plug up arteries in your brain, become stupid um, in your heart, great, get microvascular angina, worsening cardiac function, etc. So it's all bad. It's a big deal to not get enough fiber. Okay, the next thing was caffeine. I just put caffeine in there. McDougall's not going to say it in this lecture, but <clears throat> he does have other lectures where he talks about caffeine and, and goes into 
uh, some detail about how it's not a health food. It's even worse than what he says it is. I would say that based on my study of it. Okay, the next thing though that he does go into in this uh, six minute video here called cleaning up the confusion of brown sugar is he talks about how sodium is not as bad as people says it is. Yes, it does contribute to hypertension in big amounts when it's present in big amounts, but it's not as big of a deal as he thinks it is. He thinks it's being scapegoated for a lot of other problems in the Western diet. And he says a little bit of sodium can be beneficial because people put a little bit of salt on the outside of their food. It gets them to eat the food. Um, he also says sugar is, is way over demonized, that it's really a minor thing in comparison to fat and excess protein and lack of fiber. These are the big three major uh, problems in, uh, in nutrition, according to Dr. McDougall. Um, he says a little bit of sugar and likewise fashion of sodium can be beneficial if it'll get people to eat more plant foods. Um, and he also talks about how Dr. Kempner, with his rice diet, which had magnificent success, if the patient wasn't able to maintain their body weight, he would give them table sugar. One of the reasons why I give them table sugar is pure carbohydrate. That means CHO, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So there's no nitrogen in there. The kidney, 75% of its work is to excrete nitrogen. So, uh, and also it excretes acid. So by avoiding all the, the protein, you make life a lot easier for your kidneys. And so he's trying to keep those patients out of kidney failure. Also, he didn't want to give them any fat because he wants to prevent hypertension. Um, and you don't need to put salt in anything. You just give them the sugar, and that worked incredibly well. So anyways, I thought that was just funny because these are the big things being hyped all over the Internet for plant-based eaters is so-called good fats, which is BS, and then so-called old people needing uh, protein to treat their sarcopenia, more BS. So anyways, you can hear from the big dog from Dr. McDougall. Um, and uh, so anyways, I thought that's interesting. And I will have the link below to his lecture so you can see, you can hear it from him.